What is up guys, we are back. First and foremost, I would like you to subscribe to the channel. There's a lot of you guys watching my channel without being a subscriber. Please subscribe, support the channel, uh, support me and drop us a like. Now, the greatest split of all time that has allowed me to make this sort of progress and gain um, over 15 pounds of muscle. Guys, push pull legs, let's go. Right, what's up guys? Today I want to share with you my training plan that I have followed pretty much since 2020, um, on and off uh, throughout our entire prep and off season uh, for 2021, 2022, 2023, um, and even the start of 2024. Um, so the split is push, pull, rest, legs, rest. The reason why I am a massive fan of this split is it's a five day frequency, so it means you're training every single body part across five days. Push sessions, chest, shoulders, tricep, pull sessions, back, rear delts, bicep, uh, and the leg day, self-expansion, quads, hamstrings, um, and calves. Now, push-pull legs can be modified into anything that you wish. Um, it can be adjusted and manipulated in ways to actually bring up your weaker body parts, so you could add different frequency for pull days. So, for example, you could structure push-pull, uh, rest, legs, pull, rest, repeat, if you needed more back. So just because you are following a push-pull leg split, it does not mean that it is not specific to you. Now, being very much realistic, yes, my back needs bringing up. However, I need more size everywhere. So push-pull legs um, in variation that I am going to show you today um, is an ideal split if you are looking to just get big and strong uh, and, and grow everywhere. Um, how you can be more specific with this um, is by adjusting your volume up and down across each session. Um, so once you've set your volume up as a whole in your program, um, if you need, for example, a little bit more back, but you don't want to change your frequency, uh, you would then add a few more sets into your back work and pull some sets away from your legs or potentially then push sessions. Um, that's literally as simple as that. If there's any confusion or anything you want me to delve deeper into, comment below. I'm more than happy to help out. Um, now, Let's go on the sessions uh, on the screen here. Uh, Aaron will actually put the sessions up so you can see for yourself. Uh, we've got variation push A, uh, prime, prim stack, um, cable wire raise. Now, the cable wire raise are normally vary between lying and seated. Um, so that is the bread and butter movement to begin with, followed by incline smith, high incline strive, um, prime dip, incline cable fly, single arm cable lateral, uh, cross body tricep extension, a single arm overhead extension, and then Towards the end of my actual off-season, I would add a press-up, um, and it would be uh, at the end of the session with as many reps as possible. Uh, so that's push A. Uh, now, the sets and reps uh, and the structure of things is listed here, guys, so if you can see that for yourself. Uh, it's around 20 sets per session, um, and it's the same for both push, day, push days. Now, that's not the volume that I started with. I actually built up to that volume over time. Um, so... The main thing here is what we're looking at is even distribution between chest, shoulders, um, and tricep. Now, the movements that are followed pretty much stay the same with variations of and chopping and changing them in and out as of when we're needed. But generally, when it comes to training, one thing I will tell you that you'll benefit from the most is once you find your structure with your setup and you find exercises you connect with well and you can progress well over time safely, I highly advise you sticking to these movements. There is nothing you will gain from chopping and changing your workouts over time. The longer you can stick at certain exercises and your training split, the more effective it will be. Training is a skill. The more you do something, the better you get at it. So the more you do certain lifts, especially more advanced lifts, the better you'll get at them and you will get far more from them as well. Following on to pull A, uh, I always start uh, with some prep work, so it would be hanging leg raise before pull or rope cable crunch before push. Uh, pull day would be a single arm pull down, uh, generally two to, three, two to three working sets. Uh, then it will be prime extreme row. Uh, I pretty much ran that for a long, long time. Why? It feels great. I get a good connection with it and I can load it safely. Single arm gym shot row. And then uh, an upper back pull down variation, uh, cross body pull over. Uh, and then I would actually go into bicep. Reason for that is when my back and upper back is torched, I found it quite hard to get a lot out of my rear delts because of the pump that I had across my back. 
So I found that doing a biceps first and then going to my rear delts, um, I could actually hit my rear delts really, really hard uh, with no issues and no uh, performance decline from fatigue following from upper back work. So it would be uh, overhead cable curl, either on a cable or machine, uh, and then it would be followed up with a dumbbell hammer curl, Nautilus reverse fly three, set, three working sets. Um, so 21 working sets across that session, um, that would be pull A. Now, leg day. Uh, two variations of leg days. One leg day has a hip hinge, of one does not. Uh, so both my leg days structured very, very differently. So I'll go between uh, legs A and legs B. Uh, and over time, what I found actually is the next time I go into an off season, I will structure this a little bit differently. Uh, but that's a conversation for another time. So starting with adductor, um, the adductor is kind of big enough. So always start with an adductor. Uh, seated hamstring curl, leg extension, uh, leg press, uh, hack squat, barbell RDL, uh, seated calf into a standing calf. Now with this session, um, I still wanted to keep a degree of hip hinge in so I can hip hinge every five days, like I mentioned before. Um, training is a skill. Repetition is the mother of skill. So the more you do something, the better you get at it. Um, therefore, if you are quite weak or you're unfamiliar with a certain exercise, do it more frequently. You'll get better at it. Uh, that's the reason why I had frequency of every five days with a hip hinge, and it did work pretty, pretty well. Uh, as I ended up pulling six plates for reps in peak of my off-season, which is the most I've ever done. The reason why I moved my Cybex hack after my leg press, um, I got up to seven plates in Cybex hack for reps with just thin knee sleeves on, uh, no knee wraps. Um, and, and to be honest, the stimulus to fatigue ratio ended up getting skewed to the point where I was just getting battered from these sessions. I wasn't really getting as much stimulus as, as I knew could get from them. So instead, I started doing leg press in higher rep range, uh, making them really, really hard, um, and then going into the hack squat, and I found that way my legs responded even better. Um, never really struggled with my leg development. So um, 12 working sets total here, um, not including calves. I don't really count calves. I don't count um, volume from calves or abs. Again, not all volume is created equal, guys. Remember that. What what demand you will get from ab training or calf training, it's very little to none uh, versus what you'll get from uh, big compound lifts. So legs B. Uh, legs B was my hip hinge session. This is where I focused on pulling from the floor. Um, so it was a hamstring dominant session. Uh, adductor to begin with, SLDL to follow that up with. Um, adductor primes you pretty well for a hip hinge. Um, then I went into an SLDL. Uh, then it was seated hamstring curl, leg extension, and then leg press, split squat, and then single leg standing, standing hamstring curl. Um, again, 12 working sets. Um, this was the most challenging session, I would say, because of the amount of work and output I was giving, I was actually giving into the hip hinge work, um, but definitely very much enjoyed them. Now, as a whole, this programming is something that I will always, always refer back to. Um, I am running a new training program and you should check that out in the next video. But this training setup um, is ideal for anyone looking to build muscle. Um, variations of push B, and pull B, uh, a pretty much mirror image of push A and pull A, um, but you will see that here. It's just a different exercise selection, and what I'll, I'll go through that for you shortly. However, first, I want to kind of talk about program as a whole. It is really a setup that you can be extremely flexible with. So you can have set days with a push-pull leg variation, um, and you can adjust uh, depending on what you need to bring up. So let me give you an example. If you need more upper body, um, you could add in an upper session where you could go push, pull, uh, legs, rest, um, upper, lower, rest, repeat. Uh, if you need more lower body, um, you could potentially go push, lower, uh, rest, pull, lower, rest, repeat. So it's infinite as to how many variations um, you will be able to do from a push, pull, leg split. Um, so I think Currently, we don't have a clear understanding of what push-pull legs is, and this is why I'm here trying to trying to uh, explain to you in a little bit more detail as to how flexible you can be and how much you can actually get from the split. Um, and even looking at the progress pictures that uh, you will have seen pop up throughout the video, uh, you know it's uh, it's certainly the best split that I've run, um, and I've trained with a bro split before. I've trained with variations of different splits uh, in my time. Um, and none of them was quite as uh, effective as this split. Um, and I know that a lot of top tier guys have also run these splits that are, are heavily muscled. 
uh, without you know the, the the genetic freaks that just look at them well and grow out. These guys don't apply, and these guys more than likely don't watch this. They probably watch Netflix. Uh, because they're already getting huge. Now, you're here for the answers to get huge, so you better pay attention. Now, um, let's get back into push B. So, single arm standing cable lateral arrays. So, as you'll notice, uh, always start with push sessions with a, a variation of a lateral. Uh, reason for that is it doesn't take away from pressing, but it primes me well for my presses, and uh, your shoulders can never be big enough. Follow that, up, follow that up with a cable fly from a chest. Again, I started here with isolation work, challenging the pecs in the shortened range. And I actually follow that up with um, a dumbbell press, um, challenging in the length and range. What I found is doing a cable fly before my dumbbells did not actually take away from my pressing strength much. Uh, however, it did, it did keep me more honest with my progressions and with my loading, uh, making sure that I stayed on the pecs and I was a lot stricter on pressing, uh, making sure I wasn't getting carried away and just turning into all out power press. Uh, which again, I can press uh, pretty heavy, but um, it serves no purpose if my chest isn't getting stimulated. So be mindful of that. Uh, we'll follow it up with a flat gym echo press, which is heavy in the stretch. Uh, then a narrow narrow press, it was either the gym echo or um, a dip or um, a smith. Um, and then it was a overhead extension, three sets, and then finish up on prime laterals for three sets. And then again, it was a press up. Uh, as an unwrap rest ball set. Uh, pull B, usual business, leg raise to start with, and then again, single arm pull down. Um, lats always to begin with. Your lats can never be big enough. I've never seen anyone with an overly developed lat just yet, uh, ever. Uh, even Roy Coleman, the best back uh, to ever grace uh, the stage, did not have two big lats. Follow up with a prime plate loaded seated row. Um, both prime plate loaded seated row and an extreme row are, are definitely great pieces that I do utilize. Um, so free working sets there, adjusting the resistance profile across every single set. Um, then single arm prime row, prime row um, focus on the lat. Uh, again, single arm work for the lat is my preference. Reason for that, I get a much better connection with it um, and I can actually get in a position where my lat is getting torched. Dual arm, uh, because of the structure that I have with short arms and a wider rib cage, um, I don't really get much from it. So be mindful of that, guys. Um, just because someone is getting a lot from dual arm work may not be the exercise for you, specifically, especially if you have got um, a different structure to them. So you've got to work with what you have and what you will be able to get the most out of. For that, up, we're prime pin stack play loaded row. Uh, an amazing piece uh, works more so upper back traps and thoracic lats, which is your upper portion of the lat. Um, and then again, Kelso shrug with that. And then we went straight on to a low cable curl or a preacher curl and then single arm double handle curl and then finish off on reverse pack deck like I explained, uh, rear delts at the end of the session. Now that is a split uh, that I will probably always refer back to. Um, it's very enjoyable. However, I am trialing a new split right now. Um, so please, please make sure you watch that video. Uh, that will be the next one that we'll drop on for you guys. Uh, the new split for my contest prep. I'm three weeks deep on that split now. It's feeling great. So far, so far no issues, but I've got no doubts. I'll probably refer back to this split because it is the greatest training split of all time. Guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Mm. All movements that you don't have, all the exercise that you don't have that I am using, you can swap for like for like movements. Uh, if you're unsure on how, comment below. Uh, and make sure that you get um, stuck in to your own training and take something away from this. Guys, thank you so much. Uh, please remember to like, share, subscribe, uh, do all the fun stuff to support the channel. Thank you guys, take care and peace out for now.